disciples came riding into the city of Jerusalem. Now the people didn't realize it yet, but Jesus' ministry in this city of Jerusalem would eventually lead him to the cross. We are told that as he entered the city, people lined the streets and they were waving olive branches and palm branches, and some of them were even throwing their coats down on the dusty road. The whole city was in turmoil that day. Some people were uncertain about what was happening, and they were wondering, who was this guy who was riding this donkey into their town? Others were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! Glory to the one who lives! Or, or um, glory to the king of kings! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! These people knew that Jesus just wasn't any ordinary visitor. just like today, Jewish people celebrated the festival of the Passover. And when they were able, they went to the holy city of Jerusalem to celebrate. The Passover was usually a special meal that was celebrated together with family and friends gathered around the table. It was a celebration, maybe even a party, to remember the night when long ago, in Egypt, the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites. It was a party to celebrate how Moses once led the Israelites out of slavery into freedom after wandering through the wilderness. So that night, Jesus also gathered around the table with his friends to celebrate the Passover. He gathered them all together because he wanted to tell them how much he loved them. And he wanted this one last opportunity to celebrate with them and to have dinner with them.
he finally announced that it would be the one who dipped his hand in the wine with Jesus. And that was going to be his friend and his disciple, Judas. Well, everyone at the celebration was completely surprised by that. Maybe some of them were even mad that it had to happen, but somebody had to be sure that God's plan was carried out. And Jesus knew that in order for this to happen, he would need to be given over into the hands of the Roman authorities. It was hard for people to continue to eat. And then, yet another surprise. As they were still gathered all around that table, Jesus looked up, and he took some bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. It's given for you. And whenever you eat from this loaf, remember that I am with you. And after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks, and he, and he blessed it, and he gave it to all of them, saying, This cup, this cup right here, is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood. It's given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Whenever you drink from this cup, remember that I am with you, I love you, and forgiveness is yours.
even today, this morning in the year 2013, we still gather in this room and we remember Jesus in the bread and the wine of this simple meal.
On that final night that Jesus gathered with his friends to eat the Passover meal, he gave them a new commandment. He told them that he always had and that he always would love them. That commandment of love was meant for us today as well.
When Jesus and his friends finished eating the Passover that night, they went to a garden. The garden is called Gethsemane. Gethsemane means olive press. So in that garden, there were lots of olive trees, big olive trees producing large, plump, juicy olives. <laughs> The Garden of Gethsemane was just outside of the city of Jerusalem. It was near the Mount of Olives. When Jesus and his disciples got there, he told his followers to sit down and to wait for him. Then Jesus took a couple of his disciples and they went further into the garden so that they could pray. Jesus prayed to God and asked God, his heavenly parent, if God could do something to prevent him from having to die.
After the angry hordes took Jesus away, the disciples that were left in the garden were afraid. And who wouldn't be? They were afraid for Jesus. They were afraid for their own lives. If they could do that to Jesus, what could they do to them? They weren't really sure what would happen to them, especially now that Jesus had been led away. Hey, you were that man from Nazareth, the one they called Jesus. No, 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 I, I don't know what you're talking about. This man is one of us. I saw him that night with those people who were with Jesus. No, no, I already told you, I don't know that man, and I, I don't know who you're talking about. No, she's right, you were there. You're a Galilean. No, again, I already told you, I don't know this man. Peter? You see what just happened? You denied that you knew Jesus, just like you told us you were going to do. I wonder how he knew. He said right then, Peter remembered what Jesus had told him. Before the rooster crows two times, you will deny that you know me three times. <laughs> Stand up when I'm talking to you. That's better. They brought Jesus to me after they arrested him in that garden. I had him stand before me, just like you are now. I asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he gave me a sarcastic answer. Something about me saying that he was the king. So I asked him again who he claimed he was. And even though everyone was mocking him and ridiculing him, this Jesus just stood there, and he wouldn't answer me. Can you believe it? He wouldn't answer me, the governor. It was crazy. He seemed crazy. I was frustrated and amazed. The people just wanted him dead, and he wouldn't say anything to defend himself. So, I decided to do what I do every year at the Passover. I release one prisoner, set him free. It makes me look good, you know? So anyway. I hauled Barabbas out of prison. He was a real dirtbag. Barabbas was a murderer. I stood Barabbas beside Jesus, and I asked the people who they wanted released, and they all yelled, Barabbas. Can you believe it? Well, can you? Look at me when I'm talking to you. I'm Pilate. The people wanted this murderer to go free instead of this meek little man named Jesus. So, I did what they wanted. I released bread. Then I asked the people what they wanted me to do with Jesus. And they yelled, crucify him. They told me they wanted to kill him using this terrible form of capital punishment. You hang with someone on a post for days until they die. It's humiliating and it's ugly. The soldiers have to pound nails through their hands to hold them to the post their feet too. Sometimes we use a cross, that's what we did with Jesus. Actually, the person hanging there, you know how they die? They die by suffocation. Did you hear me? I said they suffocate because the way they hang there collapses their lungs. Sometimes we even hang them upside down, and then all the blood rushes to their head. <laughs> it's not a pretty story. But remember, you came to me, so I'm telling you the way it really was. Don't you understand? I had no choice. I had Jesus flogged, because everyone loves good flogging. Then I turned him over to the crowd, let them crucify him. I washed my hands of the whole situation. I really wanted no part of it. 
Now, go away and leave me alone. I'm the governor. I don't have time for these Sunday school children. This choir.
the dove was wounded. A crown of thorns was placed upon his head, and he suffered, and he bled. Our tears flow with anguish and with shameful dread. place 
to this hill called Golgotha, the place of the skull, to witness his death. People mocked Jesus on that cross. People asked him to come down and save himself if he was really a king. It's a two. After Jesus died on the cross, a man named Joseph, who was from Arimathea, went to Pilate and asked him if he could have Jesus' body. Pilate said that he could. So Joseph took the body and he placed it into this tomb, a tomb that he actually had built for himself to be buried in.
So I wanted to be sure that Jesus' body was buried before that, according to our religious laws. But now I'm tired. I'm sad. I'm even mad. And I'm scared. They killed Jesus. Do you understand that? He is dead. I just need to be alone. Just leave me alone. Thank you.